You can probably tell, I'm like, I sound really stuffy. I um, have a cold. Such is life with children in daycare. So this past weekend was my pop-up in the anthropology store in our downtown area here in Milwaukee. And I thought I would give you guys just a little bit of a background and behind the scenes on everything that went into it, how I got it, um, how it went, in case you yourself are a business owner interested in doing this, or if you're just a follower who's interested in knowing more about what goes into an event like this. So probably the best place to start is just how did I get the pop-up? Um, these in-store pop-ups by local business owners, like makers and artists, I knew were a thing that happened. I'd seen some at places like, I think West Elm does this quite a bit. I knew someone when I lived in Chicago who did one there. I think some of these chain stores, national stores, think of this as a good way to sort of feel local to their customers and not feel so removed from the community by doing these local artists and maker pop-ups. So I think that's the benefit on their side. And then obviously for the person who gets to do the pop-up, it's an exposure to a new audience, people who wouldn't have come across my brand at this point so far. So I, I've, I've definitely in theory been interested in doing one, but I hadn't really thought to pursue it because I hadn't really seen any advice on how to get a placement like this. I don't know how helpful my story is gonna be because it's a little bit random. I follow a bunch of local Milwaukee businesses on my Instagram, both my personal Instagram and my business one, and there was a boutique that had reshared a story post from a woman, and it was just like a really cute post, and as a way to sort of seek out more of my market, I occasionally try to follow just like individuals to Milwaukee, for me, women, because women are my main audience. So this was a woman who from what I could tell was a mom, clearly liked local shopping, so I followed her. And it turns out she actually works for the anthropology in the third ward in, here in Milwaukee. I, again, total coincidence, like, I was not trying to reach out to her, I was just trying to follow more people that I think would be my audience, my market, that sort of thing. And so when she got the notification that I followed her, she must have looked at my profile and she messaged me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing a pop-up at Anthropology? You know, apologies for how easy <laughs> and effortless that seems like it was. I will say, I think the things that I did that allowed this to be sort of easy effort like if I were just emailing this person like going into the store getting their email address and reaching out to them the things that I did ahead of time that I think would help that are partially my branding you know a store like anthropology is not going to feature a brand that they think is sort of out of line with their audience and their standards and so putting the effort that I do into my packaging my website um, my social media presence, that sort of stuff is the first impression that a person who works for one of these stores is going to get. And so making sure that that's really on point before you start reaching out to people, I think is huge. But other than that, I'm not sure, I can't give advice on how to go about this if you don't randomly come across a person who works for the company on the website. I do think, I mean, I will say, the staff, everyone who worked there was so kind to me. Like from the minute I walked in the store, I had only had contact with this one woman there. Um, and so everyone who works there introduced themselves to me. They were so warm, so welcoming. And so I think if you were someone who made things and you walked into a store like this, knowing that they're a store that does pop-ups and just put yourself out there and said, hey, I'm, I make XYZ, I'm here in the area, do you ever do pop-ups with small businesses? My guess is that a lot of places are going to at least be kind to you whether the answer is yes or no because again you're like someone who lives in the area, a potential shopper of theirs. So I think it's worth just trying because the worst that can happen is they say, you know, I don't think it's a good fit or that's not something we do. So I think it's worth it personally. Um, I know that's easy for me to say because I didn't have to do any of that legwork. But again, 
put my random happenstance aside, I think that that's something I would do if I were actively seeking this out. Once I scheduled the time for my pop-up with the woman who worked there, then it was sort of a matter of figuring out like what products am I going to bring. That's always a factor whenever I do an event. You don't want to bring, I mean my product is heavy. Like candle, t a big box full of candle tins or a big box full of soap is heavy and I have to carry it back and forth and I have to figure out like how do I balance I don't want to lug a bunch of product here that is pointless versus I don't want to sell out of something and then miss an opportunity to potentially sell more of it. So I'm currently at the stage, I still feel like I'm new enough to events that I err on the side of bringing too much stuff. I mean, if the downside is just that it's a lot more heavy lifting, I feel like that's preferable over the downside of, oh shoot, I sold out of something and now I missed out on sales. So I brought... A bunch of stuff you know I still have all of my spring stuff right now we're in the spring season depending on when you're watching this um, so I have spring soaps and spring candles along with my year-round candles and my year-round soaps that I offer I also brought my lip balms and my shower steamers and this is my first event with shower steamers so that was gonna be kind of like a fun little experiment to see how did those go over So in terms of the event, I was going to be there for five hours from 10 to 3. They open at 10 o'clock. And so I showed up at like 9.20, I think, and started unloading my stuff, setting up the table. They provided a table for me this, because this is something they do sort of regularly. They had a table available. And just based off of the size and layout of the table, I set things up pretty simply. Um, I actually left off. I had brought a couple of soaps that I actually didn't even put out on the table because... I wanted, I wanted to get all of my spring stuff up there and I wanted to get all of my candle scents up there. And so I left off, I have an unscented soap, but honestly, my unscented soap doesn't sell great. I offer it because people who want something unscented are specifically looking for that. It's someone who is maybe sensitive to fragrance or perhaps they have eczema or they have a kid who has eczema and they want specifically unscented soap. So I like to have it available, but for an event like this, I didn't want it to take up real estate on the table considering I didn't have enough space for everything. So I left that off and then I left off another soap, I think. Um, so I put like my three most popular year-round soaps, my three spring soaps, and then all of my candles and my shower steamers. And I, I think that that was the way to go. And then I also had lip balms sort of in the back corner. And I feel like just based off of how everyone's response was to the product, I think that that was the right call. In the future, like for other events, I think if someone's providing a table, I think I would have asked for the measurements of the table so that I could have figured this out beforehand, um, done like a dry run at my studio to figure out how much stuff could actually fit because then I wouldn't have brought the unscented soap and the other soap that I left off um, because again, extra weight I didn't have to carry. So that's something to consider if you're doing this and they are providing a table, just try and get the dimensions of the table if it's available. Right before the store opened, the staff who was working there came by and checked everything out. They were, again, I cannot say enough great things about the women who were working in anthropology while I was there. Everyone was just like very supportive, very cool. And they all bought a little something. Some people just bought a lip balm. Other people bought a bunch of stuff. Um, so it was kind of a nice like confidence boost right before the doors opened that they were all just like very supportive and excited about my stuff. So in terms of what I would consider the pros of doing an event like this, a big one is the relationships I created, not only with the main point of contact I had at Anthropology, who arranges these sorts of things, but also just the other staff that was there because they had like shift, they had a, at least one shift change while I was there. And so there was like a new group of women and I met all of them, they were all great. Um, some of them started following me on social media and I think that if nothing else, I was definitely exposed to ID, like my target market. 
um, in these staff members who just were really great and it was good to get that feedback. It was also, it's always great in person to hear people's reactions to the fragrances of the products. So to have someone in front of me smell something and give their first impressions, good or bad, or like what scent comes through for them, all of that stuff is really helpful and it's not something that I can get from online shoppers. So as much as I get like positive feedback from people who purchase online, it's usually not as specific and it's not as, it's like an immediate first impression that you get when someone's standing right there smelling it in front of you. So that's always good. That's the great thing about any in-person event for me and my product and like what I sell. I also think another pro, like although I can't necessarily put a number on like the return on investment for this sort of thing, there is a certain validation of my brand that comes along with having Anthropology put a little bit of a stamp of approval on my business and having me come in the store. So from here on out, I can say that I've worked with Anthropology as a brand. And I think that, again, like can't put a number, a dollar, dollar amount on like what that does for my business. But I do think that not only for my own confidence, but also for any like future stores I might reach out to, I can say like, I've done this at Anthropology. It's like a gigantic respected brand in the retail space. And I think that's sort of, I, I say I can't put a dollar amount to it, but it's like kind of invaluable because I can use that information in a lot of ways. I was able to push that on my social media. Um, and again, like just, oh, I know I now always have that as something that, um, what do they put, what do they call it? like a, like a feather in my cap or something? Such a weird phrase, but that's <laughs> what comes to mind is, I don't know, I don't even know if that's the right phrase, but you know what I mean. In terms of the cons of doing it, you know, like obviously something none of us had any control over was the weather. Um, it was just like really heavy, wet snow. It's, it was not fun to be outside walking in. Um, and it's because this is, it wasn't like a anthropology that's in a mall. It's an anthropology that you come off the street, I think. And the, the staff like kept <laughs> apologizing for how low the turnout, like just the traffic was, but obviously not their fault at all. Not anybody's fault. Just like one of those freaky things about, um, the Midwest and spring and we always get snow in April and unfortunately this was the day we got snow. That's always a risk with any um, outdoor event as well. You know I have an event coming up next month that is entirely outdoors and it's early May and it could be pouring rain on the day of the event and there's no you know there's no rain check like you still have to show up and do the event and possibly no one comes. So it's that it's always tough because it's something you can't plan for. Um, but I also think just like keeping the perspective of, you know, well, I, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. So having, I think it's nice to have a balance of uh, events that are not affected by the weather and events that might be because on the flip side, if it's a gorgeous day on that day in May when I have the event, it ramps up attendance for sure because people love to go find something outside to do, especially here in the Midwest where we've been inside for the last like six months. So, you know, it can go either way. It can work for you. It can work against you. Unfortunately, in this situation, it worked against me. Another downside, I think, of this specific kind of event is when you do something like a craft fair, a farmer's market, a maker's market, one of those kinds of events where it is like, People show up for row after row of small businesses who make things, that's what they're looking for. It's the exact vibe that people are expecting. They want to come up to your table, they wanna ask you things, and they want to buy specifically these kinds of products. When you're going into a store that is a very established brand, like Anthropology, West Elm, I think Madewell does these as well, People come into that store because they're looking for the anthropology experience. They're not necessarily coming in to talk to a stranger at a table that they don't really, it's like people are out of practice of that kind of interaction in a store like anthropology. They're used to like the very expected kind of experience. And I'm also not someone who's 
super outgoing. Like I'm not, that's not my strong suit in terms of sales. Like I'm not super salesy in that way. I'm not gonna call out to people to come over to me if they don't show interest on their own. Again, maybe something I need to work on, but for this instance, I think it's just something good to keep in mind that in terms of like what my sales expectations were, I set my goal a little bit lower than I think I would have for an event like the one I'm doing next month, which is specifically like rows and rows of tents of people selling things because it's, it's just a different expectation from the shopper and you have to factor that in when you're deciding like what does success look like from this specific event. I, it was also clear that some people thought I was just an anthropology employee, which um, is kind of funny. I mean, I guess I understand why they might think that, but like people at, <laughs> some older couple came in with a dog and they were like, are dogs okay? And it's like, I don't know. I don't make the rules here. I don't work for the <laughs> store. Um, but I said yes anyway, because I don't know, I probably shouldn't have done that. But I had seen other dogs in the store, I think it's fine. Anyway, they brought their dog in, I said it was okay. I hope that it was. Like I said, it's people just aren't as familiar with this setup and dynamic, so their, their willingness to like approach me and talk about my product and buy from me is just different than someone who's coming to an event specifically for my type of business. So like I mentioned, like I had set sort of like an arbitrary goal for myself for sales. I had hoped to sell $500 worth of product and unfortunately I only sold about 350, which is still great. More than I would have made if I had just stayed home that day. Um, and I also think because of the bad weather that had it been nice outside, I think I would have hit 500. So I'm just trying to like manage my expectations, not focus on not hitting the goal and instead focus on how much I made not having <laughs> good weather on my side. Um, and also I had a hectic week leading up to it with both of my kids being sick off and on and out of daycare. And so I didn't promote the pop-up as much as I would have hoped. So, you know, I think that all things considered hitting 350 in sales was still great for me all around great experience and like completely unrelated and completely not something to factor in probably but the people watching experience was so enjoyable like i was sitting right in front of the front door so everyone who came in i got to watch and i had like an excuse to just be sitting there watching them that wasn't like creepy it's like oh sorry i can't move away from this table and it was it was really entertaining. Like the, the number of older men who walked in the door by themselves and immediately got self-conscious and said, just like sort of to the room, just looking for my wife, as if like they needed to let us know they hadn't chosen to come into the store. I, it just made me laugh every time. Like uh, that kind of stuff. It, it was what kept me entertained when it was slow uh, because I love that kind of stuff. I love just watching people going about their day and trying not to be self-conscious about it. So I'm gonna add that to the pro list. It's not official. It's not something I would necessarily tell you to factor in, but I did. I do consider it a pro. So that was pretty much the experience in a nutshell. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to comment below. I have more events coming up this summer, so I'm hoping to be able to take you all on a little behind the scenes of each of those. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And if you enjoyed this video, it would help me so much if you liked it so I can reach other people just like you. 